Well, I'm joined now by the British Olympic marathon runner, Mara Yamauchi, and by rapper and podcast host, Zuby. Great to see you here, Zuby, who once took part in a weightlifting competition four years ago as a woman to kind of prove a point. And guess what? He won. And by talk TV contributor Paul Arone Adrian, who will still be attempting to defend the indefensible on this issue. Well, Glenique Frank, uh, just to be clear, or Glenn Frank, whichever uh, Glenn or Glenique is identifying as this week, was invited to appear but pulled out this morning. And like I say, uh, Glenique or Glenn, again, we don't know because Glenique's going back to being Glenn in future races and has always run as Glenn before, um, did, did say it was wrong. Uh, but you are asked when you enter the London Marathon which category do you want to run in, male or female or non-binary. It's ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous, as I keep saying. But there are still people who think this is perfectly fair and equal and we should all just stop making such a fuss about it. So let's have a little chat about this. Uh, well, Zuby, let me start with you because you come all the way in here. Great to see you in London. I love the fact that you tested all this four years ago and you did it to raise the problem as an issue. And, of course, you demolished all the females that you were up against because physically, as a biological male, you're simply more powerful. But you exposed the futility, if you like, and unfairness and inequality of self-identity if it becomes limitless like this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been talking for more than five years at this point, but especially the past four publicly about the absurdity of the issue. And that's why back in February 2019, I had that tweet I put out there with a video of me breaking the British women's deadlift record while claiming I identified as a woman. You literally broke the women's record. Yeah. It well, I mean so to be clear, it wasn't in a sanctioned competition, but it was from one of my training sessions just showing how easily I could lift a weight that's Well, we're looking at it now. Kilos. This is you as a woman. Yeah, it wasn't right. exactly difficult. Lifting about 17 Paul Arone Adrian, <laughs> I would imagine. And I know you like a bit of weightlifting, Paul. So why don't yeah. you try and lift a bit of that later in your gym? We'll it's see how you get on. Later. Here's yeah. a spoiler alert. You won't be able to. <laughs> um, not because you're not a very strong lady and not because you're not a very committed athlete in your own but right. because of the biological differences. Now, do you get it? Myself, is the penny Zuby. dropping? So I get it, but what I wonder is whether you get it, Piers. What, what am I missing? What, what I wonder is why it is you're struggling with the fact that some people are different. I don't. And, and the people who have decided that they are different yeah. and who want to live a different life, yeah. some of them have the capacity to do that medically and legally. Mm. How is infringing on the rights and privileges of 50% of the society helps the transgender community? And why do they even care so much? You can call yourself woman, you can do whatever you want. It's your body, it's your life. But don't you think this behavior is going to create more animosity for your community, it's impossible. Men cannot be women and women cannot be men. We know that. We know that. It doesn't matter how you slice it. We know that. It just makes a lot of people, the people who are making this argument, look ridiculous. It will only widen the gap and the divide. How are we not? <laughs> how can this be even an argument when you have men who have tried to be athletes who were not even mediocre, actually were really terrible, and now they're coming to women's category? And I really resent the the, the false argument uh, being made by some right wing um, commentators as. This is what feminists always wanted. They're the ones who said, you know, uh, gender is social construct. Listen, I think it's a stupid argument to be made. Women, we're not necessarily talking about women can be men or man can be women. We know what they're talking about. I don't call myself a feminist, but it's very clear that women wanted their equal rights in terms of living their lives to reach their full potential. We know that. that. That's what it has always been. Equal rights as human beings, which we should all have. Because women's humanity, we're not equal to men. 
there were limitations of what they can achieve. I honestly think um, this counter argument um, is a very false one. This has nothing to do with women. It's men who have always been mad about women getting equal rights. And whether they put on a skirt or whether they uh, just fight for women not achieving as much or staying at home being barefoot and pregnant, it's all men that are doing this. Um, and while we appreciate some of the right wing Republicans or, or Republicans in general fighting for women's rights, the, the fact that conservatives are on the right side of history in this uh, war today. But I don't think it's helpful to perpetuate this lie that feminists wanted to be men. It was never the case. And you guys know that too. Having the right and the freedom to pursue whatever it is you want to do does not give you the right to infringe in another group's biological reality and try to wrap them blind. I'm very aware of the issues that trans people have had and continue to have, but I think people like Leah Thomas, people like uh, Glenn Eek here, they cause massive bigger problems for the trans community. They make the whole thing look like a mockery. Yep. They make a mockery of being trans. Yeah, you're absolutely right in that the so-called activists are harming the group that they're claiming to advocate for, as well as harming 51% of the, of the whole human population. Because let's be real, all of this stuff, all the negative downstream impacts are on girls and women. They are not on boys and men at all. I'd say this whole thing is incredibly misogynistic and I don't like to throw that word around too much. To take the conversation up a level as well, I have a question and the whole thing is, why are we trying to force people and why are so many people entertaining the denial of reality itself? Yeah. Women's rights are incredibly important. Fairness in sports is important. Safety and security and privacy, all of these things are very important. The fundamental problem at the root of this is everyone dancing around pretending that a man can truly be a woman and a woman can truly be a man. Nonsense. It's going to get to the elites. It already happened. It already happened in New Zealand. What about Laurel Hubbard, the New Zealand weightlifter, who qualified uh, for the first Olympics uh, a couple of years ago, having set records in the women's field, but she took the place of a woman weightlifter. The average age for the weightlifters in that competition was about half Laurel Hubbard's age. She'd been very unsuccessful as a male weightlifter by comparison, but she deprived a biological female of an Olympic place in that team. That to me is completely wrong. A lot of what we're seeing is the prerequisite to get to the elite sports category, and it's going to happen. So what then? Because women will not be able to compete. Their category will be wiped out. Yeah, you're absolutely right in that the so-called activists are harming the group that they're claiming to advocate for, as well as harming 51% of the, of the whole human population. Because let's be real, all of this stuff all the negative downstream impacts are on girls and women. They are not on boys and men at all. I'd say this whole thing is incredibly misogynistic and I don't like to throw that word around too much. Very misogynistic indeed.